Hello everyone, it's Eliza McNamara here to talk to you today about the importance of working hard. See, in order to be happy in life, in order to really feel good about yourself, you need to be achieving something. You need to either have achieved something or you need to be achieving something. You need to feel like you're helpful, you need to feel like you're useful. And a lot of people, because they don't actually feel useful, because they don't feel like they're helping, because they don't feel like they're needed, they fall into either depression or they'll fall into behavior patterns which are really unhealthy as a way of getting that instant gratification, as a way of meeting that need temporarily to make themselves feel good. So a lot of people might meet this need by getting drunk and by going out and partying and getting attention in that way. And a lot of people will get this need met by being egotistical. So for instance, if you're quite flirtatious, if you're constantly flirting with people, then that might be because deep down you're actually really insecure and you actually feel like you're, you don't have enough value as a person, you're not contributing enough to society or to your work or in the way that you ideally feel that you could be and should be and so you constantly fill yourself up with this egotistical stuff. And I was talking to this girl today and she was telling me about this guy that she's seeing and about how he's really gorgeous and he's really attractive but he's also really insecure. See a lot of people who are attractive become, if unless they have something in their life that they're achieving, that they feel good about, that makes them feel like they're doing something productive with their life, they can become very, very insecure and dependent on their looks as their thing to make them feel good as their validation because everyone needs to feel validated and you have self-validation which comes from being true to yourself from following your dreams and from doing what you truly want to do with your life and then you've got external validation which comes from other people giving you approval for things and you can get approval for being a great skater, you can get approval for being a great runner, you can get approval for being a great conversationalist, you know there's all sorts of ways to get this approval but ultimately you need to approve of yourself and you need to be happy within yourself and if someone's really insecure but they try and cover this up with this egotistical behavior this is often what's going wrong and often People need to have real love in their life because if you've got love in your life then it balances things out because if someone is has got love in their life and they're working hard and they've got love that love drives them to continue and to focus because if you're going to work hard you generally need to do it because you're achieving and you want to get attention and you want to get this validation from other people or because you want to help people and you want to contribute to society and you want to make a difference and you want to make people happy so it's generally for both of these reasons and, and sometimes it's for one more than the other but I think that what happens is if people don't feel like they're helping people don't feel like they're needed then this ego kind of takes over and you know where I live you know there are a lot of single people all living in one concentrated spot and it's really interesting seeing the different levels of egotistical behavior amongst people. I notice the people who have got love or who have work that makes them feel loved are far less egotistical, they're far more balanced, they're far more normal, they're, they're a lot calmer. And the people who don't have love and who don't feel loved for whatever reason tend to be quite egotistical and sometimes extremely egotistical depending on how loved they feel and also somebody could have all of the love in the world but if they're not loving themselves this could also be an issue so you need to love yourself as well and a lot of people like their relationships appear to be really really healthy but they're actually really not and so like you think they have love but they actually really don't because there's give and take in every interaction, in everything, there's got to be give and take. And I think some people, because they're so insecure, give a lot more than they receive. And other people, again, because they're insecure, might receive more than they actually give. And there's all sorts of ways of balancing this out, but the way that I've found to be most effective 
in having balance in one's life is to be honest with oneself and to also allow other people to be honest with one as well because you, you can be honest with yourself all you want but sometimes you need an objective third party to be brutally honest with you and that's where real friends come in real friends family who really genuinely care who are not afraid to tell you the truth can help you so much because when people are honest with you you can fix something but you yourself might not actually see something on your own you might need a real friend to pull you up and go hang on a minute what are you doing and that can go a very 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 long way and I think sometimes people are so caught up in being busy and being productive and being active and becoming successful and getting their validation that they don't actually have the time to be self-aware so it really helps in those situations if you have somebody genuine tell you what's going on and make you aware of these things because no one's perfect but we all like to think that we're perfect and we all like to think that we're better than we actually are and there's all sorts of behaviors that people fall into to try and convince themselves of this and if they're not like that they're often really really insecure so some ego is actually a really good thing some ego is fantastic but you know like with everything there's got to be a balance and there's got to be some awareness there and that's why it's so important when someone is honest with you when someone does give you constructive criticism that you respond to that and you actually take that on board and obviously you know sometimes you've just got to ignore people because some people are just downright mean but if someone's giving you constructive criticism then you need to take it on board and it can help you to become a better person it can help you to become your best self and that is the greatest gift of all but that obviously takes hard work and most people don't want to work hard at improving their character they work hard most people work hard every day so you know they work hard Monday to Friday they work hard when they get home because they've got a family and all of this stuff and they're constantly working hard so the last thing they want to do is have to look at themselves and I think the loveliest people are those who really continually work on being a better person not just for the people around them but also for themselves because in order to be a good person you need to be happy within yourself because if you're truly happy within yourself it's a lot easier to be giving to another person it's a lot easier to devote your time and your energy and your attention to making another person feel good because you're full within yourself but if you're feeling crap and you're having one of those days where you don't really feel great then you don't really have much to give to another person so the number one thing in all of this is to be happy within yourself and once you're happy within yourself then that's the foundation so you know let's say you want to build a castle and let's say building the castle is the equivalent of achieving your dreams in order to build the castle in order to even lay one brick you've got to make sure that the ground is stable and in order for that ground to be stable one has to be happy within oneself and a lot of people because there's so much stuff going on convince themselves that they are happy within themselves but you can tell that they're not because if they're on their own for even five minutes they start to go crazy they need to have something going conversation the radio the television something they can't handle silence they just can't take it they can't handle being on their own and if you're happy within yourself then you'll be able to spend time on your own and you'll be able to appreciate your own company that is the number one thing of a person who's happy within themselves that's the number one thing to look for is this person capable of spending time on their own is this person capable of doing things on their own without five of their friends the bigger the group the weaker the individual uh, I'm not saying people shouldn't be in groups I'm not saying people shouldn't go out in groups but if somebody's always in a group and they always need to be in a group and they have to be in a group if they're out then that person is generally very weak and this is because these people often have to sacrifice who they are in order to fit into the group and we all need to sacrifice we all need to 
make sacrifices if we're in a group in order to just, you know, it's just something you have to do. It's part of life. But if you have people around you who you have a lot in common with, then you won't be making that sacrifice as much. And that is the thing I find with a lot of people. They socialize with people that they don't actually really have as much in common with as they like to think. And group behavior, you know, if you study group behavior, it's bizarre, the things that people do in a group. It is crazy. People will do things in a group that they would never in a million years do on their own. And you notice this in your teen years. When you're a teenager, like a lot of people start smoking, start taking drugs, a lot of people go off the rails. And I think the thing that determines how far off the rails someone is gonna go is how much love they've got and how much love they've received at home. If someone's received a lot of love at home and if someone's parents are really loving and really make them feel loved and accepted, then that person is a lot less likely to try and fit into a group by doing something stupid like taking drugs or smoking cigarettes. And as adults, I think this pattern continues. So you, know, it, you can look back to when you were growing up and you can ask yourself how much unconditional love, not just love, but unconditional love did my parents show me? Did my parents try and turn me into someone I wasn't or did they accept me as I was? Because this pattern is often set in the teen years and often carries on throughout a person's life. And if you were made to feel like you're perfect just the way you are when you were growing up, then it's very likely that as an adult, you will have the confidence to stand up for what you believe in and to be who you are, even if the people around you don't accept that person. Because you know your value and you know your worth and you know that you're fine just the way you are. And of course, everyone can improve. But there's a big difference between being open to constructive criticism and being really insecure. And that's where the egotistical behavior comes from. All of this egotistical behavior comes from people not actually feeling loved. And because they didn't feel that when they were growing up, this pattern continues throughout their life unless something happens. And if something happens, you know, if they meet someone who accepts them as they are, it could be a friend, could be a lover, could be a job, then that pattern can change. But having this awareness, you immediately know where you fit into this. And if you actually take the time to be self-aware and you take the time to be on your own and step out of your group, step away from the television, step away from the radio, you can actually really look at yourself and be honest with yourself and figure out what it is that you can do to be even happier. Because you might be happy, but you might not be really happy you might just be convincing yourself that you're happy and that is the worst kind of happiness because unless you can actually really admit that something's wrong then how can you fix it you can't so first you've got to be really honest with yourself and also another thing I've noticed is people can get used to anything we're very very adaptable back in the day we had to be adaptable because it wasn't easy you know, a thousand years ago, five hundred years ago, surviving was our number one priority. But now we don't need to worry about survival. Now we can think about what we want. We can have what we want because of technology and all of these advances that we have. It's amazing. But I think that a lot of people settle because of the way that we're built. We're built to adapt. And we're very, very capable of adapting to pretty much any situation, no matter what we might think. So... I think if you're aware of how you've adapted and how you've compromised what you truly want in order to adapt, then you can actually be free to create something new. Because if you are suddenly put into a situation that is much better than the one you were in a month ago, then initially you'll be extremely aware of how happy you are and you'll be extremely aware of all of the differences and all of the improvements. But over time, you can become used to those things and you can become almost commonplace with those things and you stop appreciating them as much. And then you find that you want more. 
And I think the key to satiating this need for wanting more and always wanting to improve is to actually be giving back and helping other people to improve their life as well. Because when you help others, then instead of it being about you, it's also about it's also about what you can give back and that is what's going to make you really happy because if you're happy within yourself and you're also giving back then that's complete balance that's everything you could possibly want in a nutshell you couldn't possibly want more than that because if you're happy within yourself and you're continually improving your life and working towards what you want and you're also helping others then that's it that's as good as it gets because you're continually improving and you're continually helping others.